here we are taking a look at Sharista Files. Again, Sharista Files is a free and there's a paid version of this application on the Windows Store. I believe it's about $8.99, which is kind of steep, honestly. Um, but take a look at it. It is a fluent file explorer. As you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, occasionally I do look at a, quite a bit of file explorer and mockups and just what people vision envision like a fluent like slight let's say sun valley-esque file explorer what that could be um and this is an option for that this is a contender for that so right off the bat i can tell you this looks pretty good in my opinion so we're gonna go to this pc just to start the baseline this looks pretty good in my opinion even in the windowed view um it even looks good in the super ultra wide view like i have um you don't see that in this video otherwise you'd have to squint at your screen to see it um but it looks pretty good in here so you got tab support so you can open up tabs multiple tabs and so on like that i'm going to close out of these tabs uh you have your navigation pane your navigation area up here uh, one thing i can say right off the bat that i don't like of, of this navigation area is how this area here where you actually enter your path um is like touching the refresh button it kind of bothers me and then two the edge uh if you see the left side of the edge which i'll zoom in on it doesn't line up with this area here which is black on this side it doesn't line up it's kind of just it kind of just has like i don't know it's got like a few pixels like half millimeter or some a couple millimeters away from this edge here i kind of feel like it should just line with this align with that so the artist in me is saying that um another thing that i can say off the bat is when you go up here my default what i do in file explorer all the time is if i need to resize it or close it from you know full screen which this is full screen for it um, i typically just go straight to the top like i don't ever go to the right top i go straight to the top and i drag down just like that you see how that worked but i don't ever go all the way to the top i usually just kind of go like right here and i drag down which obviously with this one because this uh, navigation pane area is there you can't really do it. You kind of have to go here and then you can drag and resize and things. Otherwise, you got to go all the way to the top and then drag down. You got to pretty much touch the edge of the screen. So if there's something to be fixed in this application, maybe figure out a new placement area for this navigation area. Um, email me. Uh, if you're the developer of this, email me and uh, maybe we can figure something out to make it so it's just a little more tolerable in terms of that. Uh, another thing that you can do in this application is you can obviously use this hamburger menu, close navigation and open up navigation. You can see your various drives and things. Um, you can actually edit this navigation area, which is nice. Now, the one thing you can't do by editing this navigation area is you cannot add cloud storage sources such as Google Drive, OneDrive and you know iCloud Drive and Dropbox. You can't add any cloud storage as far as I've found in here. Um, but overall it looks nice one thing it definitely does better over than uh, the files application from pretty much called files uwp or the files application the fluent one that you guys have heard of probably is you it lets you see how much storage you have left just on a simple graph and if you hover over you can see how much storage you actually have it lets you see how much you have just by glancing which is nice uh, the files app it doesn't actually let you do that it just kind of shows you the drive and you have to click in or hover over to see how much storage you have or right click which this one doesn't really have right clicking for that it just shows you it um, you can see the libraries here these came these two area or these three areas come in by default um, but this bob's burgers one obviously i created that when i was testing it out now the way i created it is if you right click you can't right click out here or anywhere if you right click say bob's burgers library or any of these entries here you can see edit navigation bar icons or items and if you scroll down you can see bob's burgers tendies and things like that so what i did was uh you hit this plus button and if you scroll down the plus button right there and then one thing i wish it did was if when you hit the plus button it automatically goes to the bottom of the screen i wish it did that by default which it doesn't um so you go click that plus button and then you can customize what you want that I guess the the parent directory to be so I want the parent directory to be uh, raising canes so let's type that in so I want the parent directory to be raising canes I want the icon by hitting this drop down button to be I don't know let's make it this library icon and I don't want it to have a path at all which is how it's organized and if I want to add an actual a sub directory or sub path I can hit this plus button right here scroll down you see it says sub item I can name the sub item whatever I want. So I can I can name it um I don't know. 
uh, three piece combo. And then let me erase that so I can name it three piece combo. And then let's say I want it to be, I don't know, I want three piece combo to be my E drive. So that's what it's going to be by default. I'm going to make it my E drive hit. Okay. So now you got raising canes folder. If I hit drop down three piece combo, if I click it, it's a, another name for my E drive, which brings up my external hard drive, the E drive. So you can see how that works. It's pretty straightforward. It's pretty simple. Um, also another thing you can see is that when I go out of full screen, uh, at first the search button, I don't believe was even there. Now it is there. It's kind of strange, but you can actually search with this application as well. Um, so for example, if I want to search, I can be like, I want to search for Zaminoff and I know what that is. That is actually, um, I'm typing Zamin if I don't know how to spell it, I'm gonna search for Zaminoff and see if it can find it. If it's indexed at all, it looks like it's not finding it. Let's type in Zam. Maybe it'll find it. So it looks like it's not working to find it. And I, I'm not sure why. If I go to other M, will it find Xamin? Xamin. It doesn't search for it at all. Xamin is actually a folder in here um, that I have in my downloads folder here that pretty much just is just a, what is it called? See, it's right here. It is a, a font style that I have. So now if I search for it because I'm in the folder, should it work? It doesn't seem to work. It was working before and now it doesn't seem to work, but I can assure you, um, it actually does work. The search works pretty well. It just, for some reason right now, it doesn't work for me. Um, but again, it's not a perfect application. It is a usable application. That's for sure. Um, it looks nice. And the other thing that you'll notice too, is when I go to windowed mode right here and then I click away, it takes away all the transparency. It just makes it opaque. But when I click into it, it brings back the fluent transparency, which is nice. So that's, that's pretty good for that. So another thing I'm going to look at is I'm going to look at the settings. So when I go to settings, there's a whole lot gets thrown at you at once. One thing at the top before we even get deep into settings is you can see dual pane mode here. If I hit dual pane mode, you can see that it brings up two panes. I can scroll individually between these panes. I can look at Cinebench and things like that. And if I go to settings here, you can see here that I can switch it back away from it. And I can also reorganize by that vertical pane that is uh, disabled by default until you go to dual pane mode. You can't switch it whether you want the panes to be horizontal or vertical next to each other. Um, you can choose themes, which is pretty nice. Now, the interesting thing with these themes is that uh, when it says light, dark and system theme, um, it doesn't mean that it's just changing it to a light theme and a dark theme like black versus white, like most applications. Each color here I discovered has its own light and dark theme, which is very interesting. So if I go to pink, which you got to avert your eyes, uh, and then I want to do like, let's say I want to do a dark theme on pink or light theme on pink because my computer is currently on dark theme. If I do a light theme on pink, this is pink in light theme. So it's going to say, please restart the application in order to make the user interface correct. I'm not actually going to do that, but every theme has its own, uh, Every, every color choice has its own light and dark theme, but it's hurting my eyes now. So I'm going to go back to uh, this dark theme so like my eyes can be good to go. So there's a lot of options here. You can choose generic folder thumbnails. You can use generic file thumbnails, single click mode, which means that if you click on a file, instead of double clicking to go into it, you can just click it once and it'll go into it. You can hit show checkboxes, file, op file operation icons on taskbar. There's a whole lot of options that you can pick here. Show log viewer for performance issues and all that stuff. You can do a whole lot. File access permission. You can lock files. And then one thing you'll notice here is that, like I said, settings kind of throws a lot at you at once, but he's actually already thought of this. And one thing that you can see here is try the new settings interface experimental. Now what that does like you see here is it changes the whole interface to kind of something that I'd say should be the interface by default. It should, this, this, this looks like this is what the first interface should have been. This shouldn't be the second idea for a settings interface. This is so much better. It's organized. Um, yes, it's on the far right of the screen. You can't switch it between left and right, but it's organized. It looks good. It's, you can see just the same stuff, but they're organized between log experimental options, the about options, general. One thing I'm going to tell you right now is that general and the file operations are the exact same thing. So something has to go with that one. I'll let the developer decide on that one, but it just looks so much better 
than than what I have here. This this is too much. There's too much going on here. I love the other settings button right there. It just looks so much better. Now, I have a list of things before I close out this video of what I noticed that you cannot do right now. And the first thing that I said that you cannot do is let's say I go into, I don't know, I go into my C drive, right? One thing you can do in the normal file explorer for Windows is you can control scroll to resize folders. So if I go to the file explorer here and you can see my quick access area, if I zoom in and out, I'm control scrolling. So I'm hitting control and I'm scrolling up and down on my mouse and it resizes the icons. You cannot do that with this at all. Another thing too is the highlighting of files. So if I go to my local disk again and I want to highlight, I cannot highlight my files at all, which is strange. Um, that needs to be added definitely. Uh, another thing that I noticed that you couldn't do is when you have a mouse that has a backward and forward button on the side of it, you can't use it in this application to go forward or back between your um, your various folders and things like that. So I wish that was added to um, cloud storage sync. Obviously, I said that in the beginning, you cannot sync OneDrive specifically and a bunch of other things that are cloud storage providers to this uh, application. So I wish you could do that. And then another thing is to move this navigation area so that way you can drag this application easier because if you click over here and try to drag I've clicked and hold you cannot move the application you have to click this area here it's like this top area is the hot area and if I click that it moves around so I wish there needs to be something done about this area here right off the bat those are just the minor things that I was the features that I want to see in this application to make it look a even better contender for people wanting to use this, especially those paying the money for the pro version to support the developer. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I know this was probably a little longer video. This is actually the second recording of it. The other one was like 20 minutes long. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of this application. This is called Shrista or Shrista Files. Hopefully I said that right. Yeah, let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you guys later.